This is a day I've been looking forward to for two and a half years. Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. On the 19th January 2012, Steve Paul Jobs, known as Steve Jobs, delivered his historical keynote on the Mac World. With the announcement of the first Apple cell phone, the iPhone. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, today Apple is going to reinvent the phone. The announcement sent the company's stock sky high, making it one of the biggest companies in the world. But for Steve, that wasn't the beginning. The story of success started in San Francisco. Steve was born in 1955 of Syrian Muslim student and American student who gave him up for adoption by Paul and Lara Jobs. Jobs attended Cupertino Junior High and from young age showed early signs of interest in inventions. It wasn't all romantic. I didn't have a dorm room, so I slept on the floor in friends' rooms. I returned Coke bottles for the five cent deposits to buy food with. And I would walk the seven miles across town every Sunday night to get one good meal a week at the Hare Krishna temple. I loved it. In the autumn of 1974, Jobs started attending Homebro Computer Club with Steve Wozniak. In 1967, Jobs and inventing partner Wozniak founded Apple as a company for assembly computers and selling. The Apple logo was inspired by Isaac Newton's Apple. That's what a computer is to me. Uh, what a computer is to me is, it's the most remarkable tool that we've ever come up with. As the company grew in 1983, the company needed a CEO. Jobs convinced John Scully, the CEO of Pepsi, by telling him, Do you want to sell sugar water the rest of your life, or you want to come with me and stay in the world? On January 1984, Jobs introduced the first graphical user interface, the Macintosh. It is now 1984. It appears IBM wants it all. Apple is perceived to be the only hope to offer IBM a run for its money. Dealers, initially welcoming IBM with open arms, now fear an IBM-dominated and controlled future. They are increasingly and desperately turning back to Apple as the only force that can ensure their future freedom. <laughs> IBM wants it all and is aiming its guns on its last obstacle to industry control, Apple. Will Big Blue dominate the entire computer industry? The entire information age. Was George Orwell right about 1984? In the end of 1985, in the power struggle between Jobs and Scully, Scully fired Jobs from the company created. Steve Jobs was fired from Apple.
We just released our finest creation, the Macintosh, a year earlier, and I just turned 30. And then I got fired. How can you get fired from a company you started? Well, as Apple grew, we hired someone who I thought was very talented to run the company with me. And for the first year or so, things went well. But then our visions of the future began to diverge, and eventually we had a falling out. When we did, our board of directors sided with him. And so at 30, I was out, and very publicly out. During the next year, Jobs started his own company, NEXT, which was a failure. Meanwhile, Apple kept suffering major losses. Open to return the profit in 1996, Apple bought NEXT. Jobs was appointed CEO of the company he created. Jobs was the official CEO of Apple, starting the series of products which will praise the profitability back to Apple and change the technology revolution. It comes down to trying to expose yourself to the best things that humans have done and then try to bring those things in to what you're doing. I mean, Picasso had a saying, he said, good artists copy, great artists steal. From 1998 till 2005, Jobs started concentrating on the personal computer, creating products which would beat Microsoft in the computer market. The Macintosh grade is that the people working on it were musicians and poets and artists and zoologists and historians who also happened to be the best computer scientists in the world. With big lines of iPhone, Macs and iPod, Apple introduced the iPhone to then again revolutionize the industry forever. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path. And that will make all the difference. <laughs>